Was there anybody, whether it be a writer, creative member, producer, that was particularly helpful in trying to get you guys back on TV? I do know they integrated more wrestlers into the creative team. Like I know that Daniel Bryan and Edge were kind of pitching in last year when they were yeah. when they were off TV. But did anybody specifically uh, you feel like help you get back on TV? Um, I, I, I tell you, we uh, finally got to talk with Bruce Pritchard. And so we finally got to talk with him. Uh, we went to TVs uh, at one time where, you know, uh, we weren't booked or anything, but Steve and I were like, we know it. we'll just go to TVs. We'll see if we can talk with someone. We can either talk to Vince or Bruce and just kind of, you know, let them know like, hey, we want to work type thing. And that's what we did. And then that's, so we went there and we got to talk with Bruce. And that's, uh, and once we talked with Bruce and that's when kind of the wheels started kind of rolling, okay, we want to get these guys back on TV. So uh, I said, I don't know. I don't know if he went to bat for us or if he, you know, like had an idea already in, in head, but I know that we, once we talked to Bruce, it was probably about a week or so later that we, uh, you know, got introduced to the idea that it was going to be coordinating on in ourselves. So to kind of go back a few years, who were the main people you worked with creatively in NXT? Because I know you all did a lot of different things. I know that Triple H's role has evolved significantly over the years. Yeah. Uh, how how has how how was that there for you, and and who helped you? Oh man, there's a lot of people uh, that helped us creatively. Um, you know, with me, uh, with Murphy and myself. I mean, we had uh, a lot of people. With a guy named Ryan Katz. Uh, there that would always uh, film stuff and always willing to do promos and stuff. He did Dusty, Wrestling Society uh, X back in the day, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dusty Rhodes was another big advocate for uh, a Buddy and myself and, of course, Alexa. Um, you know, so it was just great to get the bounce ideas and stuff like that off, off him as well. Um, and then uh, as Forgotten Sons-wise, uh, I was Steve Carino was, was a huge advocate for us. Uh, I mean, he so much to, to the fact that we, when me and Steve were pitching the idea, we would do these performance center shows. And that was, these are the shows that are kind of um, where you kind of get the pitch ideas. It's time where you're in front of your own peers, uh, in front of a camera, but you get to pitch your idea and kind of like how it would look, you know, on TV in, in a storyline type thing. And I'll never forget that Steve Carino, uh, you know, volunteered that because me and were, uh, Cuddy and I were going to beat him down and then we were going to start shaving people's heads. And he was one of the people that we did just to kind of show, yeah. uh, you know, a, a side of intensity and, and that type of stuff. And so that was one thing that I was always grateful for. He was always great with coming with, uh, with ideas, uh, trying to help us like, hey, how do we uh, write this uh, to uh, get to a writer? How do, you know, how do we present this and that, that type of stuff? So he was, uh, Steve Carino was always great with that. Uh, I think helped out a lot with the Forgotten Sons. Uh, he was the one that told us that Jackson Riker would be joining us, kind of okay. as the Forgotten Sons and that type of stuff. I think he even uh, he even pitched uh, Lacey Evans at one time down in NXT oh, wow. uh, for us to have like a, a four-person group, uh, kind of a, a rival along Sanity uh, yeah. so that we could have some stuff going that way. But I think creatively, uh, they already had some stuff with Lacey Evans uh, going forward. So uh, they just stuck with Riker, Steve, and myself. 